Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca Minkoff, designer and co-founder of the Female Founder Collective. Today we're gonna to be getting a new perspective on how to launch a brand, how to reframe failure, and how to succeed. In my book, I specifically talk about failure and how to reframe it, and I view it as sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. I think traditionally, founders have always thought of failure as something to hide, something to brush under the rug. When you get that resilience, when you get that bounce back, like those dolls that you punch and they get back up, you're always that much better for it. As a founder, I like to model failure as it's something that's okay. If I fail, I'm the first one to admit it. I'm the first one to take responsibility for it and really show my team that no one is perfect. A great example is we were doing a Fashion Week activation and I made some pretty bad choices and I was putting my feet in the ground and being extraordinarily stubborn. Guess what? It exploded in my face. My team was truly disappointed with my choices and I had to own it. And then I went to them and I said, you were right, I was wrong, and I'll never do that again. Not only did I own up to my mistakes, but I also was taking responsibility, which I think is an equally important activity. Whenever you mess up, it is always good to not just point the finger, point it here and then say, what can you do to fix it? Rather than looking at failure as something to avoid and run away from and crawl under your desk and hide from, I want you to think about failure as something you should face head on, you should embrace it, it's going to happen and you will always learn something from it. There's a reason why the amount of pressure founders go into and the amount of struggle that they have turns them into strong, powerful, successful leaders. So the more you fail, the more often you embrace it, the stronger you will become. Taking risks can be incredibly scary and terrifying. Let's reframe the idea of risk. I think when people hear the word risk or risk taking or risky, it is run hide. I don't think I can do that. What if I fail? Then what happens? And I think when you face this head on, when you actually go through, what is the worst case scenario that can happen if I take this risk? Are you going to lose your house? Are you going to not be able to pay your mortgage? Are you going to lose your children? If the above does not apply, take the risk. I have taken so many risks in my life that seemed like the worst idea in the world that turned out to be the best. What I always do is I identify what are my non-negotiables with this risk. And if those are met, then I dive in. And it used to be that I would dive in like this, and now I say, bring it on. About six years ago, we were on the eve of one of our first direct-to-consumer shows. We had shut down Green Street. We were hiring influencers to walk in our show, which sounds normal today, but was not. And I was so nervous and so scared and thinking, what if we fall flat on our face? And we had an incredible PR consultant who walked us through every single risk we'd taken as a company. He said, every time you took those risks, you won. And any time you tried to go with the flow and just behave and go with where the industry wanted you to go, you lost. And so I've really learned to reframe the idea of risk taking into a dose of adrenaline. And now I take that approach into every risk we take. You know, from launching our store of the future, to being on OnlyFans, to selling NFTs and being in the metaverse. Everything that's a risk now is exciting. You're not on OnlyFans, are you? I am. I'm not showing my toes though. I think risk taking is an integral part of founding and running a company. I think the only way you're ever going to explore new territory or push forward, or in so many cases with our company, we didn't have the traditional income and finances that bigger brands we were competing against had. So I think when you started taking these risks, sometimes it was out of sheer need, and then the payoff was more than we could ever expect. The advice that I would give to you if you're a female founder is take the risks. Always have your non-negotiables, but go ahead and take the risk. There are so many companies that are so scared. Guess what? Most times, people are just pretending until they get it right. So take that risk, learn from it if it fails, and keep going and keep learning and keep succeeding through all the risk taking you're going to do. Today, I also wanna to talk to you about reframing the word pivot. Some people see that as failure. I always view it as opportunity. 
But before we do that, let's hear about someone who has a question from the Skillshare community. Hi, Rebecca. My name is Audrey of Audrey Raw Design. And my question is, how long should you work on a venture or project before you move on? And how do you know when to move on? So Audrey, I can't actually give anyone a specific amount of time for how long they should do something. It depends on so many things. How much money do you have in the bank? How much runway do you have? Do you have investors who wanna see a return by X amount? But I will say this, if you have surveyed your product, if you know you have a customer base and you're still trying to figure out the right way to get it to them, I would say keep going. If you're out of money, you're days away from missing payroll, you might need to pivot. So if you need to pivot, pivot fast, depending on your runway, how much time you have, how much cash you have. And before you do that, make sure you learn from the prior mistakes so that you don't repeat it again. Many people don't know this story, but before I had bags, I actually had a small apparel line. I was making most of it myself along with one other gentleman and the bag took off. It was called the morning after bag. It hit at a time when sex in the city was huge. As that took off, my co-founder and I looked at each other and said, we're gonna have to focus on this bag because it has momentum. It has women coming out of the woodwork to find this bag, to buy it, it's selling out. And the clothing was just kind of inching along. We had to pivot. We had to say, okay, for now, apparel, Goodbye. As soon as I saw that if we hitched our wagon to that bag and to that star and took that rocket ride, not only would it provide the resources to go back and relaunch clothing properly, but it would be the source of us being able to relaunch shoes and jewelry and keep expanding the Rebecca Minkoff name. The pivot wasn't a bad thing. It was a short goodbye. It was a see you later, but we were able to go back to it so much stronger and so much healthier at a later date. I think in life, people's goals can change. Their perspectives can change. If you've discovered that you have a new goal or a new passion, it doesn't mean that you have to stick with the same thing you've been doing just because you went to college for it or just because you worked somewhere for 10 years. Are you gonna take some step backwards? 100%. But if you love something else and you wanna do that so badly, it's worth taking that risk because you will always regret the steps you didn't take or the thing you never pursued. That's the end of my lesson. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are a founder launching a brand or have one or need to know even how to begin, I actually have a class with Skillshare. So click the link below to join me and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.